What's up guys, we're gonna bro beats and today I'm gonna be showing you guys sound selection. If you guys haven't subbed already or turn post news on, make sure you do so because it helps out a lot. Let's hop right into it. So, um, first thing with this, this is gonna be this is not gonna be an easy video to make. Sound selection is a very difficult topic to talk about because it's more something that you build over time. All right, and you just have to build your mental library of sounds that you know. So I purposely picked two sounds that don't sound perfect, you know, they're not perfect together and these are synths. Now, synths are very difficult to kind of put together uh, rather than these realistic instruments, which are color coded, but we're not talking about that right now. So here we have these two sounds. Now, I purposely pick these to sound bad because what you would do is you would be like, okay, that didn't sound good, right? So you would pick some other sound. So now in your head, you know that these two instruments, whatever they are, don't sound good so now you store those in your head so now if you pick some sounds that do sound good and pick the flute you pick more of a chill pad oh, let's see right probably need to turn this down a little bit Right, you can see clearly that those sounds sound a lot better than the other ones, right? So now you would make another mental note. Okay, so this this sound, this flute, and this pad, they sound great together, right? And you store that in your head. So that's how you actually get good at it. So um, that's when people say, oh, just make beats. That's what they mean. They're just building your mental library. You're trying, you're just messing around with sounds, experimenting. And then after a year or so of doing this, imagine if you do this every single day, you make two beats a day, right? Um, every eventually you'll have you'll run through so many sounds you kind of know what sounds good all right so that is pretty much how you go about building it so now um we have to make connections now this is the most important part of the video because it's going to explain how to pick the sounds uh, whether it's a realistic instrument or synth all right so let's go ahead and move on to the connections okay so now we need to make some connections through your whole entire life you can tell what's fat was skinny, was thick, was thin, was heavy, was light, right? So we take that whole entire concept and combo it with sound selection. We put them together and now we have this. Now, how do we tell what's a heavy sound or a thick sound? Well, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's basically um, how much bass it has in it, right? Because the bass gives it the sound weight, right? Um, and then thinner sounds, right? or lighter sounds have less stuff going on. They're very spread out. They're not very strong. They're weak. Um, this will be an example. Now this isn't 100%. Okay. But this, this should get you through the tough times with sound selection. Okay. So this is be an example of a thin sound. Okay. And I'm not showing you the, the actual instruments because I think when you do that, you kind of put a tag on them to always be like, okay, this instrument is always gonna be a thin or a strong sound, right? Which is not true, especially when you're doing synths. Like, like for example, this is a violin, right? But if I were to sit here and be like, okay, violins, um, these sounds are thin, right? Then that would cause somebody to go and always categorize a violin as a weak sound, right? And only use it for specific things when um, it's just boxing them in, right? And it's and it's not always going to sound like this, right? Just like pianos can sound thin, right? But I'm going to show you a thicker sound, right? Which would be the piano. All right. Like it's still taking up frequencies here, but you could tell it's very thin. It's not very strong, right? So now the next thing we need to connect now that we kind of understand what's thin or at least an example was thin and like what's a thicker sound. Now we need to connect another thing to it. And this is the last one is the feel. So you have like warm and you have cool. So this is why I like the fruity EQ because it's set up like this already. Now other now this is only this idea is only specific to this video because um, how this is set up. Other EQs aren't set up like this, so don't try to take this idea over there. But once you understand the concept, you don't need this anymore. You can kind of just tell. So you can see this reds, orange, yellows will be warm colors, right? 
and then cool colors would be like blues and greens. So we need to connect the thin and the cold sounds to these cool colors, right? So like a bell was like a Christmas bell would be very cold, right? It'd be very cold and thin, right? Type of sound. And then a piano would be more of a warmer sound, right? Like a like here, and I'll just show you. Okay, and then a piano. You can tell the piano instantly is a lot more warmer and I guess cozy, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. Now, now, don't look at this and be like, oh, it only has to take up frequencies over here. No, don't trap yourself like that because that's gonna confuse the mess out of you. What you need to do is just listen to the sound. Don't worry about this. I'm just showing you this um, so you can kind of understand where to head, okay? And then let's go over here and I'm gonna show you where the bass, right? This is the bass. Um, so this is probably the thickest sound you will ever have in your beat, period. And I need to detach this. So I'm gonna go all the way down all up. So you have these warmer sounds, right? Thicker, heavier sounds, which get very muddy the lower you go. And then the higher you go, the more thin, and it'll get so thin till there's nothing left, right? So I'm gonna show you what I mean, right? That's super muddy. And as you see, as we go up, it'll get a lot tighter and then it'll start going to the left. It's getting thinner, you see? Right? And you see how it's like nothing there now. All right, and that's pretty much an example of what, how to pick, well, not how to pick, but what's going on, okay? So now that we got these connections and we kind of understand that heavy means warm, right? Heavy, thicker sounds are warmer sounds and then thinner sounds are more cold. So now you should be able to go and kind of categorize these sounds and kind of uh, determine what type of sounds these are, which will make it a lot easier um, to select some of these sounds. All right, so now we should understand like the warm, right? The warm and heavy sounds to so the, the light um, and cold sounds or the thin and cold sounds, right? And everything in between. So now real quick, I wanna let you know, what we are talking about is super surface level. There's so much more, like there's so much many, there's way more traits to sounds like the timbre and stuff, right? That we haven't even talked about. This is just surface level to kind of get you used to picking the sounds and kind of categorizing them. Um, like I said earlier, right? So how do we use this method to actually go about picking sounds? Well, you want to kind of put sounds in, in their own little spectrum, right? So this would be like the piano, the guitar, and these aren't exact. Um, like this violin, this little string probably will hit somewhere around here, which is fine. As you can see, it's not exactly overlapped, but when people run into issues is when they use a piano, a organ, a Rhodes, or any sound that sounds like any of those instruments I just named. You want to kind of pick a sound that has its own little area, right? And I'll just play these individually. Like I said, most of the sounds probably like in this area, but I'm going to leave this right here. Guitar, piano. So when you do this and put everything in its own place, I'm going to lower this a little bit and you put them together, they'll sound like one whole sound. Okay, so that's how you actually use this method. And if you want to add other sounds, you'll just have to um, put it in its own spot. Like I said, you can actually add multiple sounds on top, right? And you have more room to do that with realistic instruments. The problem is when you go into synths, and I'll show you why later. But yeah, you, if you want to add new sounds, you have to just kind of put them in their own spots, right? Um, and like I said, this is surface, surface level. So this doesn't mean this is the only way to do it. There's a lot more to it than just what I'm showing you, but... Um, and you can see why people say less is more because you can see this is getting complicated. So if we only had two sounds, now we have more room, right? To, we can pick a better sound, right? We can pick a sound with a lot more frequencies, a lot more uh, delay and effects going on, right? Because we got all this room to work. 
And that's where sense come in. All right, so that's how you do that now. Uh, we just troubleshoot and just kind of go through some things. So um, with this, you might want to put a solo instrument like this uh, violin, right? Or a flute, right? And it might sound good, but turn this up. Super low, all right. Now the problem with realistic instruments is sometimes they trick you because they already sound good, right? But um, sometimes like this one is too like straightforward. It's like too in your face. So how you fix that is you add effects. So that's why a lot of times you hear like with flutes, they have like the RC20 on it. Um, just give some character and just kind of melt it into the melody, I guess. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So we have the reverb and I'm gonna just turn this reverb up as I play it. Now, from here, what you would need to do is basically just turn, level it. I can see it sounds a lot more part of the melody rather than separate from it. All right, so that's how you would fix that problem. All right, and then moving on from that, um, you might run into some basses, right? Now, the basses are easy. You can never really go wrong with a clean bass, like something like this. Right, and I personally love synth basses, so, you know. Now, where you run into problems is with basses with weird harmonics on them. Um, they just have like some, I don't know, they just have some weird sounds added to them or just like a different type of distortion. Um, so you that's at that point, it's just about um, the style and what you like. All right, so you can't really too much go wrong with basses, and this applies to 808s as well. Um, but like I said, we'll I'll specifically go over um, realistic instruments, basses in another video. This is like the rundown. So now we're in a sense. Now this is the this is the problem why people have problems with synths and picking sounds because I'm gonna play this, and you can just try to figure out what frequencies is taken up. You probably said, oh, it's a thin sound. Well, you're wrong. It's really not. It's taking up the same frequencies as a guitar. So you have to be careful with synths, okay? Because um, a lot of times when you sound design, you just make the sound, you want the sound to sound as cool as possible, right? Um, when you sound design. So um, you're not really worried about, oh, it needs to be in this little area so that it could be played, right? So that's why a lot of these synths um, don't really follow the rules exactly. But we can... And this is why I said the EQ will trick you as well, because if you just listen to it, you can still pick a sound that goes with it. So like I pick this pad, um, and I'll play it. All right, if you look at this pad, it literally takes up the whole thing, right? Um, but with this, remember I said earlier, the less sounds, the better, the, more, the better sounds you can use, right? Um, so we don't have two, so we put them together. Right, we have the, the what the the bell like around here, right? And then we have this pad that's kind of going everywhere around it, right? Right, and I would argue this pad is a warmer pad, okay? So now you can add your bass to it, um, and then you got your melody. Okay, and I would say this is already full, but if you wanted to add another little melody, um, you could. You could add like another little sound um, over here or maybe even in here, okay? That's pretty much all I wanted to talk about in this video. Um, but like I said, there will be more. This is, the run this is the surface level, okay? Just remember that, this is surface level. This is not everything. So there are gonna be things that I did not mention. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.